All right, guys. So <laughs> last night during the um, Jeezy Gucci versus, which I, I I was in and out of it. I couldn't um, watch the whole thing. I got my my daughter. She she wasn't allowed, man. <laughs> he was like, "You ain't watching this joint." Um, but when I could sneak a chance to watch it, well, and I was I was also editing some of my own videos for my channel. I, it was it was very good, you know. It was very good. Those guys got a great catalog. You know, no, you know, grown men, regardless how ratchet they acted, acted, you know, to, to hype it up, to create buzz about it. Those two grown men, neither one of them want to die. They live in good lives. That's one thing you niggas don't understand. These niggas live good lives, man. I don't care how much they talk about killing them, all their raps. Them niggas do not want to die. And they do not want to go to jail. Because they got so much to live for. So much life is good for them. But during that versus battle, um, Gary Owens, the comedian, and he, 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 he funny. I mean, Gary Owens is funny. Um, he said, I want some Hennessy in a black and mild for some reason watching this. And, you know, people got mad. Some people got mad on Twitter. So it's a mixed bag, okay? This guy says, no, I don't think Gary Owens saying he wants a Hennessy in a black and mild was racist. Also, no, I don't think you get a lifetime pass because you're married to a black woman. I mean, I agree with this. This is probably the most centered. This guy, this guy's probably got. This is this is probably a real man. You rarely find dudes like this on Twitter. Rarely, most dudes are just flailing emotionally. Their emotions are all over the place. They're just oh, like most guys on Twitter have no ability to compartmentalize. They're not centered. They're just emotional wrecks. <laughs> If you ever on Twitter, I, I have to be on Twitter a lot because of my channel. And I'd be like, damn, y'all niggas are emotionally wrecked. Like, y'all make, y'all like my wife. Like, like, they, they literally make my wife look like Mr. T and shit. <laughs> like, these, these niggas are so feminine. And so, like, Every little thing that's said sways their emotions from one spectrum to the next. It's like a pendulum of emotion that just uncontrollably swinging out of control. And this sister says, Gary Owens is trending. For all the wrong reasons. And shows the age gap in those criticizing him. Dude has a permanent pass to the barbecue. Leave him alone. <laughs> so there they go with that barbecue shit. <laughs> if I was a white person, I wouldn't want to come to the barbecue. Somebody gonna get shot. Somebody gonna spray that joint. Niggas gonna get mad, leave, come back and spray that joint. <laughs> I don't even, I wouldn't even want to go to the barbecue if I was a white person. This one says, how is it Bill Burr can have a black family too and still be funny without resorting to stereotypes for acceptance? Fuck Gary Owen. God, dog, these people are so, like, they could have just ignored that shit. That's what Gary Owen do. That's the type of comedy he do. He, 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 he. he. He grew he grew up comedically on the chicken circuit, the black chitlin the chitlin circuit. I said chicken circuit. <laughs> he grew up comedically on the chitlin circuit with all the black comedians in the black clubs in the black towns. You know, he didn't grow up at the improv and shit. <laughs> I don't know, man. You know he did a lot. He was a he he, over, he was in a lot of hood movies and shit. I mean I don't know man. Whatever man. Whatever man. These people are out of control man.
And this girl, this woman says, nigga, Gary Owens is black. <laughs> and you listen, the reason you're going to see a lot of sisters protecting and defending Gary Owens is because Gary Owens has a black wife. And she fine as frog hair, too. And she got some some cans on her. You hear me? Yeah. Smash, my nigga. So, yeah. I mean, that's why black women are supporting. Because he, you know, he married to a black woman. That's where that's coming from. I mean, look. Takashi say, nigga, y'all haven't addressed Takashi say a nigga all the time, man. I find it highly offensive that Takashi get to just run around and, and you know how Hispanics do, right? Hispanics say nigga more than black people. If you, if you, and he'll want if you agree with that. When you around Hispanics, they use nigga. When it ain't even relevant, when it's not necessary, when there's no point in using it. They use nigga way more. Way, way more. Than black folk. But Takashi, he the one in the mainstream. Like, uh, if you see Hispanics in the street, they use that word a lot. But in the mainstream and, and you know... In pop culture, Takashi uses nigga all the time. Nigga, 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 nigga. And Takashi is a white man with let with with some Indian heritage, mestizo heritage, but he's like ninety percent a white guy. He don't have half a kink in his hair. Uh, the beginnings of a curl his hair come out whoosh it don't even it ain't like it ain't like he got good hair he's a white man I don't I just don't understand like like if, if Takashi can say nigga 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 leave this man alone and I'm, and I'm not here to politic whether Takashi can say it or not but <laughs> as long as he's saying it <laughs> you gotta like leave Gary Owen alone for saying this Black and Miles, nigga, Black and Miles ain't from Africa. Nigga, Black and Miles don't come from Africa. Hennessy don't come from Africa. Them white-owned companies. Hennessy and Black and Miles are white-owned companies. I bet you niggas didn't know that. That Hennessy is a white-owned company. There probably ain't a black person that worked for Hennessy. Black and Miles, too. That's a white-owned company. If a nigga didn't buy another bottle of Hennessy or another pack of Black and Miles, both those companies wouldn't even notice. They wouldn't see one change in their um in their um their report, their, their yearly earnings report. We 13% of the damn population acting like now clubs would be messed up because we the only stupid motherfuckers that buy a bottle of Hennessy for $300 in a club. Yeah, clubs would be clubs would be pissed off if if if, if, if black people stop didn't stop buying Hennessy. Yeah, the sisters is coming out in full force with Gary for Zaddy Gary. Zaddy Owens. Sisters coming out in full force for Zaddy, babe. It's Gary Owens, bro. Chill on him. She looks like she might got some. She looks like she got some cans. Black Lives Matter. Okay, she a Black Lives Matter chick. Mm, yeah, she all right. She a Black Lives Matter chick. Tell you, chill. Now listen. 
These same Black Lives Matter chicks wanted to cancel Cube. It was cancel Cube. Cancel Cube. Ice Cube. Cancel Ice Cube. Because he talked to Donald Trump. You know, the racist. The white supremacist. <laughs> Donald Trump. And he had, before the election, he said, you know, Donald Trump, let's see if we can get some stuff for black people, man. Black people got mad. Black people got pissed off. Cube was canceled. He ain't kin folk. He ain't skin folk. All kin folk ain't skin folk. Cube went and talked to a white supremacist, aka the president of the free of the United States, leader of the free world. And we think he might vote for this old white man instead of our old white man that we deem acceptable. We deem this other old white man acceptable. And we think Cube's not going to vote for him because he met with the current president of the United States of America. Trying to get some a plan for black people and some stuff. Trying to get us some stuff. For our vote, so like, look, bro, like, give us some stuff, and we'll think about voting for you. You know, that's how the game. That's how everybody else plays the game. <laughs> so everybody plays the game. But these Black Lives Matter chicks was like, nah, my nigga, you canceled. I can't be friends with you anymore. I, I have to. I can't. I've seen people. All these black chicks tell me they seen people. Voting for Trump, supporting Trump, and they can't be friends with them no more. The relationship is ruined. Going forward. <laughs> um, well, let's see what Biden got in store for his plan for his first 100 days. So remember, Cube racist <laughs> for trying to get something for black people from the, from the president. We are almost unanimously voted against. Sisters. Sisters unanimously voted against Donald Trump in the platinum plan that him and Cube had gotten together, which was going to be a focal point of the, the next Trump candidacy, which you had, you, you could believe that Trump was going to do it because in the last presidency, the last four years, he gave you opportunity zones. He gave you prison reform. He gave the HB, he funded the HBCUs when when no other president would fund the HBCUs. So he 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 Trump let you. He gave you things to where it's like, damn, okay. Like even if I'm gonna believe the media that this guy's a racist, he he sucks at racism. He's like, like if, he like smush Parker of racism and shit. <laughs> He the Kwame Brown of racism. The, 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 Rosho Nesterovich of racism. He just sucks at it. Let's see what's in Biden's first 100 days plan that, you know, 100% of sisters voted for. This is what the sisters voted for. Black women and children. So he, he, has, he has plans for environment. Host the, the Climate World Summit. Yada yada yada. He wants to be the leading country in setting international agreements that rules reduce emissions and global shipping and aviation. He wants to rejoin the Paris Agreement. Have the Office of Science and Technology and Policy create a report defining climate change strategies and technologies, show support for international legislature, and take action to decrease greenhouse gases. Okay. So it's plan for the economy. So surely gotta be something for Negroes in here. I mean, right? Like the platinum plan that Cube and Donald Trump had for black people. Let's see what was in Biden. Well, let's see what a hundred percent of black women's votes got them. Cause fuck black men and black children. They they don't seem to care about that. They, it's all about them. So let's see what let's see what let's see what Biden's plan has for black uh, what a hundred percent of black women votes like every black woman vote got black women out of this 
economy. He wants to create cabinet level working group that will promote union organi <laughs> organizing and collective bargaining in the public and private sector. So the unions got something, the private sector got something. Another cabinet level of labor representatives will be tasked to develop a solution that will increase union density. So the unions, and if you know anything about the unions, the unions are very, they, they wield a lot of political power because they, they're organized, they, 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 they contribute to these um, campaigns monetarily, and they consolidate their vote. Like, the union can deliver votes. Well, damn, they kind of like black women. <laughs> Organize. <laughs> deliver votes. <laughs> Contribute. <laughs> the union actually does everything that black women do. The black woman gave so much money to the Democratic Party. For a community that's talking about they, you know, for a community that's in shambles, where you murder, carjacking, just wayward children roaming the streets in packs, poverty, kids in prison, people can't feed their kids, for all of that, black women donated a shit ton of money to, to the Democratic Party. Let's see if they got anything for it. Oh damn! So the <laughs> what he's doing for the economy is over. Okay, so he's only he only he only fucking with the unions on the economy. Let's see immigration. <laughs> Next thing is immigration. So he's gonna end the current asylum pol <laughs> policies in place. So basically, if you uh, if you a Mexican or a person from South America, one of South American countries, brown countries, you can just walk across the border and you're good. And get a driver's license the next day and start working and get on welfare get on get public assistance WIC, TANF, everything the next day after you walk across the border illegally you want to bring back case management programs while in ending prolonged detentions that currently many families suffer from hey and just last week did y'all see it on Twitter? Black women and Latina women were arguing over who <laughs> who played the bigger role in getting Biden elected. Hit one if you saw that. It was a big Twitter war. Latina women versus black women. They was going back and forth. We we the reason Biden got elected. We the reason. We the backbone of the Democratic Party. Looking at this so far, this plan, maybe there's something for black women down. Um, maybe we ain't get to it yet, but looking at this part of the plan, it looks like Biden and Harris in the Democratic Party see Latinas, man, as being more important to you because they actually gave them something. You haven't gotten anything yet. So they're going to reverse per Trump's public charge rule that denies permanent residency to illegal immigrants. Quick. What's the penalty for sneaking, uh, for, for illegally entering Mexico? Quick. I'm going to give y'all a minute. I'm going to give y'all a minute. For illegally entering into Mexico, what's the penalty for the Mexican government? I'm going to give you a second. To write that in the chat. What is the penalty for illegally entering into Mexico? It's a felony punishable by two years in prison. A felony punishable by two years in prison. So you go into the big house for two years. Not no detention center. Not no t detention centers. Mexican authorities keep track of every single person in the country. Foreigners with fake papers or who enter the country under false pretenses may be in prison.
foreigners who are deported from Mexico and attempt to re-enter. Now, we know that's a problem in America. These guys the, or these women, they come back 10, 15 times. They get deported, they come back. They get deported, they come back. They get deported, they come back. In Mexico, if you leave, if they deport you and you come back, you get 10 years. So you get two years for coming in there. Two years for the first offense. And then if, you, if they, when they kick you out and you come back, you get 10 years. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here we 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 sh we shack you up in a um in a, in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in a detention center, which is basically like you know club med compared to their life in Mexico. Because these people are leaving Mexico because. They're living this harsh lives. It's, it's, it, they're, they're very poor. There's not a lot of opportunity in Mexico. So that detention center where they get fed three times a day, there's heat. It's sectioned off with chain link fence, which they call ch cages. <laughs> All the, the, the cage, what they call in cages is just the, the, these detention centers. They section off the, the 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 different areas with chain link. If they had just used drywall, we would have never heard nothing about no cages. I want you to understand that. If they had just used drywall to, you know, section off the different rooms and the different areas, we would have never heard nothing about cages. They used chain link, and that was cages. But yeah, Mexico don't play. You come in a Negro, black woman, sister. If you go into Mexico, you're doing two years in prison. We'll see you in two years. And if you come back, and when they kick you out, and you come back, you you want ten years in a Mexican prison. Mexican prison. Just, um. So yeah, let's let's continue, man. Let's see if anything in here is. Uh, so they're gonna not stop building the. They're gonna stop building the wall. They're going to support dreamers and their families. Get rid of refugee bans. So basically, the border's open again. God damn. Look at all this stuff they're doing for these Mexicans. Hold meetings with leaders from El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, and Canada to address the factors driving migration and propose regional resettlement solutions. All right, so gun safety. Okay, so here's something for gun safety. He's going to reauthorize the Violence Against Women's Act. I guess that is, is good for black women. That will keep firearms out of abusers' reach by closing boyfriend and stalking loopholes that continue to allow access to guns by abusive ex-boyfriend. Oh, that ain't going to help sisters. Brothers, brothers get their guns off the black market. Um, federal programs... And focus on those likely use. Okay, so this is still guns. This is guns, guns, guns. He also plans to report F from the FBI about cases and background checks. Okay, guns. He, they're making it harder for people to get guns. Oh, so Biden has a plan for the LGBTQ community. Okay. Well, some sisters are gay. All... <laughs> All the Black Lives Matter, the three chicks that found the Black Lives Matter, all lesbians. So, I mean, if you look at it like that, you sisters did get something out of this. Plans for the LGBTQ community. So we got the Hispanic community, we got the unions, we got gun control. Now we got the LGBTQ community. And remember, Cubes of Coon <laughs> for setting up a plan for black people with Donald Trump. He's canceled. So Biden plans for the LGBT community. He plans to direct federal resources to help prevent violence against transgender women, focusing on transgender women of color. So I guess, so transgender women got something out of this deal? Ain't that a bitch? You sisters. The first woman, black woman mentioned on this is a, a transgender woman. 
Y'all gotta hold this L, Jamel Hill. Y'all gotta hold this L, Maxine Waters. Y'all gotta hold this L. All you black women that just been Whoopi Goldberg. Y'all gotta hold this L. The first mention of a black woman is a trans woman on this on this first hundred day plan for Biden. He wants to pass the Equality Act, which prohibits discrimination based on sex, gender, yada, yada, yada. Blah, blah, blah. And that's for LGBT people. So Biden's plan for housing. On the first day, he plans to direct whoever is the Secretary of Housing and, and Urban Development to lead a task force. That will lead to lead a task force that will ask mayors and other elected officials to detail what they believe could make housing available. What? See, I, it sounded good. Because, you know, urban means, you know, inner city. That's where a lot of black people live. So he plans <laughs> to direct whoever is the secretary of housing to lead a task force that will ask mayors and other elected officials to detail what they believe could make housing available for everyone in their community. <laughs> Listen to these words, nigga. Plans. Ask. Believe. Available. So he just basically going to have, we going to talk about urban development. We going to talk about housing in urban communities. I'm going to make sure we get a bunch of people in the room and they talk about this. You mayors, give us your ideas. And that ain't even just benefiting black people because it's white people that live in urban areas. It's Hispanics, it's Arabs, it's Asians. Everybody lives in urban areas. The Secretary of Housing and Urban Development will also review current federal housing policies to make sure they apply to Biden's housing first approach. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Nothing in here for you niggas. 100% black women voted 100% for Biden and they got nothing. Well, transgender black women got something. Back to Gary Owen, man. Woo. Hey, they they caper for Gary Owens big time, man. <laughs> Gary Owens got a black a black wife. Man, Gary Owens been straight. Has a black wife with a black baby and is known for speaking against racism. <laughs> what racism? Ain't no fucking racism, dude. As pro-black as I am, y'all just looking for a reason to hate every white person at this point. <laughs> okay. Thanks, nigga. You got a pro-black on here chastising people about... Boy, yeah, yeah. This sister says, I swear people be looking hella hard for any reason to call someone a racist. I'm rocking with Gary Owens. And I legit give zero fucks who don't like it. Who thinks it's sad or whatever title y'all want to put on it. Miss me with your fake act outrage and wokeness. <laughs> none of this, we didn't see none of this for Cube. Cube didn't get none of this. For just trying to get y'all something out of this election, man. Election was coming up. You want to make sure y'all got something. <laughs> y'all voted 100% for somebody who didn't give you nothing, sister. God damn it. Now y'all only caping for a dude. 
they're saying jokes that y'all would call anybody racist for. I don't think it's racist, but y'all would call anybody else racist. Y'all caping for him because he got a black wife. Gary Owens wrote this early. He said he wrote this earlier in the year, January 18th. This was before Floyd and all this stuff. If he said this now, he'd be in trouble. But he said, how many black kids you sent to college? Uh, this one right here on the far right, he the one, her child with a previous marriage. But yeah, I guess, I guess their daughter's black. I mean... Shit, I guess she black. I mean, shit, everybody black, right? I guess she black. Whatever, man. Fine, she black. She black. Whatever, man. Get in the comment section, man. Hit the like button, peace.